What's going on? Today, I'm super excited. We are onto sewing a motorcycle seat cover together. If you watched our previous video, we did a basic patterning. Now we're gonna do a basic sewing. These videos kind of go hand to hand because some of the stuff that we do with patterning and sewing for me is the same. So like when I make a motorcycle seat, I won't actually go through and a lot of times pattern the bottom of the seats and make sure that we have all the edges done and then sew the bottom panels to the side panels because once you make the cover, depending on the foam that you put on it, the size of your Savage and how the seat lines up, it's possible that it could be a little bit tighter on the bottom and too tight. So what I like to do is make it a little long on the sides, then we'll test fit that color, we'll trim any of the Savage that we need to do, and then we'll go right to making the bottom piece and sewing it to the top piece. Now right now, if you look here, I'm making one of the patterns, which you see me do on a previous video. We're just gonna go through and add our 3 8 to this pattern. This pattern here is for half of the motorcycle seat. We're gonna put our 3 8 of an inch Savage around there so we can sew it together, flip this over and transfer it, and then we will have our pattern. We are patterned and ready to sew finally. One thing you, you watch our videos you'll see is I do things differently a lot. Sometimes I do patterning with tape, sometimes I do this, that, and the other thing. And it's kind of funny because I like to kind of switch it up. You learn different things and different techniques. And I remember years ago I did a motorcycle show with uh, Billy Streeter and I met him, I think it was the first time. And it was kind of funny to hear people come up to him, ask him how he did his artwork and his airbrushing. And one guy was a young guy getting into airbrushing and he's asking him, how do you layer it? Do you put your dark colors down first? Do you put your light colors down first? How do you do it? And he says, I do it differently every time. If I did it the same way, I'd be bored and go crazy and you lose your creativity. And that always stuck with me. And it always is kind of like, I don't know, every time you switch it up a little bit, you learn a little something new and it makes it more exciting and you keep on going. Also, some of these tricks I'm showing you are actually from my great grandmother. Many people don't know I was ninth generation motorcycle seat builder. And my great, 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 great grandmother, she was like pretty incredible. She used to do um, motorcycle seats for the Queen of England. It's pretty wild. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are about to sew. I'm gonna start off by putting these back pieces together. We're just gonna do a butt seam down the center and then a top stitch. When you look at a butt seam, a butt seam looks like this. You see the back side, it's just a Butt seam. Now we're going to do a single top stitch. We're going to fold the material over and do a top stitch right down the center of it. Okay, now we're going to sew this to the back piece. We're going to do a center, line up our marks and zap around. I forgot a mark there, but we're going to be good. Okay, now we're gonna do a top stitch, single top stitch around here. We're gonna take this material, fold it over. Go forward and backwards into the bin and then lock our threads off. And then we're just gonna sew. One thing I like to do is as we go, test fit everything. So just give it a rough test fit, throw it around here, just to make sure it looks like it's gonna line up. Looks like it's gonna work. Now we'll put the next piece on. We got it long enough to go underneath here. So you can see I made it longer on the bottom so that we can mark it and trim it. What I'm doing right now is I'm sewing the front rider cushion onto the rear band that goes to the back seat. Now we're gonna do the same thing, fold this over. We're gonna do a single top stitch all the way around this. Start off, we hit the machine in reverse to lock off the thread, and then we're off. Okay, top stitch is on, and we are going to test fit it again, back and forth. All right, so here we are. We just set the seat cover on here. We're just trying to see if everything's gonna line up good. Everything looks, looks good. We'll line this all up and um, stitch this together. I'll do a top stitch on here, a butt seam and a top stitch. Okay, top stitch is done. Oh, no, butt seam is done. Time for the top stitch. Whenever you're sewing, you wanna make sure your material doesn't curl underneath what you're about to sew because then you'll sew through it and ruin it. So I'm always like keeping my fingers underneath there, feeling around. 
usually you keep it inside out. This one I had the wrong way because it was test fitted on the seat and I never turned it inside out. When it's inside out, it kind of stays up here and you don't have to worry about it going underneath the seat. And okay, now we're gonna test fit it again. A lot of back and forth in this stuff. Now, I already test fitted this a few times so I know it's gonna fit. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and trim some of the Savage. I'll show you the Savage. So the Savage is where you sew, you have that little leftover. Sometimes it's a little bit bigger in areas. And on motorcycle seats, we really wanna trim that off because when you pull it tight, you kind of see that little bump. So I like to trim the Savage. What sucks about trimming the Savage, if you mess up, it's hard to go back. Seeing as we already did a top stitch anyways on it, there really isn't much for going back. I always try to say about, stay about a 16th of an inch, maybe an eighth of an inch away from our stitching. And you gotta be really careful when you're doing this because when you're watching the top of the seats, or top of the sit your scissors, the underneath sometimes the material pinches underneath it, then you put a hole in it, or you're at an angle with your scissors and you actually cut the thread, which really sucks because if you don't notice it when you put it on, especially if it's a seat you glue on, when you go to stretch it, it's going to rip that seam out and then you gotta pull it off and start over. So this is one of the things that you really wanna take your time with. Don't rush through it. Savage is trimmed off, so I'm gonna test fit this if all is good. We're not only gonna test fit it, but we're gonna pin it up, stretch it, and mark our bottom edge here. And then we'll make the bottom piece and sew that on. And then if all is successful, we will be able to um, put it together. Which is looking pretty good here. Looking pretty good here. So I'm gonna pin it and try that. Okay, hey, when you're pinning the seats, what I like to do is pull it tight. So you can see like where it's, what it's gonna look like. You wanna take your pin and stick it through one of your actual needle holes, but be very careful you don't hit the thread because you don't wanna rip it. I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna pull this down, try to take the wrinkles out. I mean, you're not gonna, well, sometimes you get all of them out. Now we're just gonna pull this nice and tight, put a pin in there, put this one down, put a pin in here. I already got pins up there. The first thing I do is pin the center points so that those don't move. We got those in, that's pretty good. So now I'm going to look at the front. I want to make sure that the left and right side, even though it's centered, you always want to make sure your left and right side are even. Make sure your back centered. And that's pretty much it. Now we're going to go around and markety mark mark. We're just going to go through and pull this. And everybody has different preferences. If it's a seat that I feel is already pretty tight, I'll go right on this edge here. I'm going to put my mark there, pull the material around, go right on the edge. Now, if it's a seat that I question, like if it's a lot of foam, like a seat cover that we put so foam on, I might put this edge down a little farther because the seat cover is going to be up. And then when we move it, that seam is going to be way beyond it. But I know because there's no so foam on this cover, it's just vinyl. I'm going to be able to stretch that. So I'm going to put it right on the edge. Now, when I sew, when I cut this, I'll cut this three eighths of an inch back. My stitching is going to be right where I put my mark here. Now, when I stretch it, this little seam is going to be just past the edge of the material where you don't see it. And always work that material. Try to get the wrinkles out as much as you can. Some weird areas here. And you'll, as you do these things, you start to go, okay, well, if this is a weird area, I know I'm gonna need it a little tighter. So you wanna make sure you adjust for that accordingly. Alrighty then, now we have this thing completely marked off. I'm gonna pull it off. I'm gonna show you a little trick that we do on usually more complex seats. This one's really not. But what happens when, you, if you were to go and cut this and then sew it, when you cut through these threads, they're gonna get loose, they're gonna unravel, and then you're in for it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, instead of just stitching over this, we'll just stitch all the way around this, and well, I'll show you that first. Let me pull this out. Okay, so here is kind of a cheat we're gonna do. So we're just gonna sew, we're gonna take our walking foot and put it right on the edge of our line that we just did, right? And um, you don't have to lock it off, but I'm forced to have it. So now I'm just gonna go through and sew all the way around that, keeping the machine on that edge. Now, even though this is a simple seat, a lot of seats have a lot of stitching going across the edges. And what this will do is as we come across here, see that it kind of goes over here and locks this off just so that when we go to trim it later, we don't have to worry about it unraveling. This seat doesn't have a lot of edges like this, but here's one here. Another thing you can do too is if this, well, we already trimmed the Savage off, but if you don't trim the Savage, a lot of times you'll want to trim it right around here because it can give you a big bump when you put the seat cover together. Nobody likes that. There we have it, and now we're gonna go trim it. 
Now we just go through and we're just gonna cut right at the edge of this. We don't wanna cut either threads. We could go right across all this stuff, keeping it really close to that. You see I'm about a 16th of an inch away and we'll go all the way around this seat. All right, now that that top's trim, we are gonna go through and make our bottom piece here. You could use tape, but I'm just gonna throw some material on here, trim it out and go we're from just there. Just putting the final touches on the bottom here where we're gonna sew the bottom to the top. And what I like to do on bigger seats that aren't high end seats that are very expensive is I'll actually do a front piece and a back piece and I'll overlap them. Then I'll just meet them in the middle. Cause a lot of times when the seat's really big with a lot of different shapes, by the time you go around the perimeter, it's gonna pull the material too much in one way direct, one direction or the other direction, and we don't want that. So I'll just trim this one out to look like this and we'll stitch it together. All right, so you can see here what I did is I took the front and the back piece that we just cut out and I just brought them together, seamed them here. So there's a seam underneath here. Now what I'm gonna do is go through and do a top stitch on here just for strength because you're gonna be pulling this and sometimes you have to pull it tighter than you want. I went through, I sewed that bottom edge on there. I also put, I folded this and sewed a stitch on here. So this is the stuff that comes around here. Now, a lot of people will do a nice seam on here because they'll put the felt underneath here and then rivet it. I don't like to rivet it and put it on top of the felt. For me, the whole reason of putting the felt on is a covered rivet so it doesn't scratch the bike. So now we're gonna go downstairs and actually put this seat cover together and hopefully it fits. I didn't even film putting the seat cover on it. We had such a busy day because today is like tool truck day when everybody comes in. So it's crazy. But anyways, let me show you the seat. 